Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 3rd, 2024 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Once you got the hang of creating Docker containers, it uh, can be an easy way uh, to experiment with a new tool. Jim Glossing now made a number of uh, tools that he has sort of created uh, over the last couple of years available as Docker containers and wrote up a quick uh, diary earlier today listing the different containers that he makes available. This also, of course, helps a little bit establishing trust in these Docker containers because you never really know with a Docker Hub, you know, where the containers are coming from and who is actually behind them. This should give you a more trusted link to these containers that Jim created. And I know Jim, he's a good guy. I'm sure these containers do exactly what they're supposed to. And then we got a blog post by Akamai uh, with uh, outlines of a threat regarding to the cups vulnerability that, yeah, I haven't thought of, honestly, uh, when I first uh, looked into uh, this vulnerability. The problem here is that as so often we do have a simple UDP packet that actually then solicits a response. And that, of course, is always a pattern that we have seen in the past in uh, amplified denial of service attacks. So the attacker is sending a UDP packet to a vulnerable browse daemon. That uh, browse D will now attempt to download the printer information from the URL provided as part of the payload of this UDP packet. Initially, this doesn't sound too bad. Uh, you would expect that uh, the server is reaching out uh, to uh, this particular URL. Well, it can't connect, uh, so maybe it does a couple of additional sin packets and then uh, gives up but apparently there are but apparently where it gets a little bit more interesting is if there is actually an http web server listening at that url and it's responding with a 404 a file not found response there's a subset of these vulnerable cup servers that will then continuously trying to connect to this web server in order to retrieve the printer information file on average they observed about 45 responses but there was a small subset of uh, these systems a few hundred that essentially never stopped sending these requests and even the average the 45 requests are still a 600 times amplification factor so certainly something to be concerned about in particular with about 58,000 systems that are usable as a responder according to Akamai and like with all of these reflective denial of service attacks, uh, the victim here is actually not the one that did forget to patch, but it's the source of the amplification, the amplifier here that must address this vulnerability, which as we have learned from past amplifiers like this, like DNS and such, can take quite a while to resolve. Akamai also outlined some additional defenses here for victims. For example, there is a static content type that's being used in these requests and the URL always starts with slash printers slash, which of course could be something that you can then filter at a web application firewall or another upstream device. And Forescout released a lengthy report outlining 14 different new vulnerabilities in Traytech routers. These routers are targeting somewhat businesses, enterprises, uh, as many routers. They are working on a Unix-ish, Linux-ish uh, operating system. Among the 14 newly discovered vulnerabilities, one receives the maximum CVSS score of 10. There is one critical one with 9.1. The remainder is only rated as medium. Most notably, the buffer overflow vulnerability in GetCGI allows for a full system compromise without authentication. 
If you have one of these routers, make sure you're applying the latest firmware image. Uh, patches have been released by Traytech. Also, see how you can further restrict access to, for example, the admin functionality and such. This particular line of devices has a rich history of past vulnerabilities and apparently is quite widely used. For Scout talks about something like 700,000 exposed systems that they found. And then a couple newly exploited vulnerabilities. Yesterday I mentioned uh, the uh, remote code execution vulnerability in the Simpra webmail system and uh, collaboration server. Well, this is now actively being exploited, but remember that it's not uh, exploitable in the default configuration unless port 10,027 is exposed. Secondly, there is a SQL injection vulnerability in Ivanti's EPM core that is now also being exploited. Patches for this flaw were released in May and June. There was actually a proof of concept being published by Horizon 3.ai. So kind of wondered why it took so long to have it actually being listed as officially exploited. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And by the way, Boyan will be teaching next week in Munich. So if you're in Munich, uh, you're too late for Oktoberfest, but you're just in time to learn about web application exploitation with uh, Boyan. He, there's also a community night. So if you are not attending the conference itself uh, during the community night, uh, Boyan will be talking about the quick uh, protocol. That's it. And talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.